Just wrap up all the stimulus that we've gotten so far to you, um, and, and really the housing policies that we got in the last 24 hours. First of all, is this a silver bullet? How has this really changed sentiment in the markets? Right. I think overall, the uh, housing market policy stimulus is quite, uh, you know, beat on the upside in three as aspects. First, uh, you know, the down payment cut could be as high as 30 percentage point for second home buyer in tier one cities. Secondly, you cut existing uh, the uh, mortgage uh, as high as on average 50 bips, which is equivalent to 200 billion uh, interest payment cost save, uh, which uh, is equivalent to like a 10 bips cut in LPR. And also we have the cut for the uh, new mortgage rate uh, as far as high as uh, mm. 20 bips lower below the uh, premium. So overall is beating market expectation I think is going to work for like a sentiments uh, from this perspective to at uh, least elevate the pressure yeah. and hopefully to you know lift the sentiments going forward. But I think there are still three things to uh, going forward to watch for for the housing market policy, uh, which I believe will be you know um, much more important for market to uh, clarify the current policies uh, okay. uh, roadmap. Mm -hmm. What what are those three uh, those things? Three policies, yeah. Well, I think first one um, uh, for the uh, existing home, uh, existing mortgage cut uh, is more applicable for tier two and three cities because it cannot be lower uh, mm. than the lower limit uh, uh, when the mortgage were issued. So, for example, for Beijing, it started from uh, 2019 as LPR plus 55 bips, so it won't be affected. Uh, uh, that's one thing, tier one, tier two I cities, see, yeah. difference. The second one is city by city policy uh, for the mortgage down payment. We have to see different cities, uh, how to play around with it. Second, uh, the third thing is whether those key cities to follow the suit of Guangzhou and Shenzhen to provide preferential loans for mm. the second home buyers for the first mortgage, regardless of the credit record. That's more important going forward, three things. I see. Uh, good, good to get a little bit more context mm -hmm. on that. Um, overall, just in terms of markets, I mean, we're kicking off a new month. We continue to see this divergence, right, where foreign investors and yeah. those northbound flows continue to see record outflows. But southbound, I mean, we're actually seeing some dip buying among mainland investors here right now. Are we likely to see any change in that dynamic? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, uh, their divergence very interesting, and uh, we haven't seen that uh, in history, so uh, draw a lot of attention. But uh, there are several things I want to clarify. First, northbound are not solely foreign for foreign money, so that's the uh, first thing we want to make it clear. Secondly, you know True. the reason why a lot of investors buy southbound, for, you know, buy Hong Kong shares, why southbound? Uh, that's one of the uh, that's one of the trading scene. What we call like a barbell strategy, <laughs> high dividend play, which is is very good at this environment to still, uh, you know, a, a, applicable. And the third thing is, uh, I don't, mm. I don't want to really overstate the form of flows. Uh, there's an interesting pattern of how the market to bottom out historically. We started, uh, we started mm. the uh, historical experiences. Uh, the order, sequential order for the market to bottom out is first you see the policy bottom, and then sentiment, and then the market itself, and then the uh, form flows and then earnings. So fund flow essentially is a lagging indicator. Sometimes it's follow the market itself and then okay. it takes some time, especially for long fund to, you know, to realize, okay, I'm on a waiting, I have to, you know, uh, gradually come back. So uh, I won't overstate it uh, because uh, our, as per our data, the, uh, the allo overall allocation is yeah. already underweight by foreign investor on HR market.